Hi there, my name's Andy Ray, and I'd like to talk to you about the Denston College sixth form experience. And in particular, the idea of progression. Now then, where are you up to at the moment? Okay, you've been working hard for your GCSEs. And you created a platform for your A-levels. It's a really important time. There's got to be that sense of progression, that sense of movement, through GCSEs, through to A-levels, and then beyond. And basically, what you are doing, you're enhancing your post-sixth form opportunities, whether it be at university, and indeed in the world of work, apprenticeships, apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships. We have got results day coming up. August, the week after A-levels. Now, it might be that there's a, a rethink required. Maybe things haven't quite gone to plan, or maybe things have changed for whatever reason. We're here as a school. I'm here to help you. Get in touch. We can have that conversation on the phone. We can have those email communications, and I can help you potentially change, rejig what it is that you might want to be doing post-GCSEs, even if it's not your intention to come to Denston College. Okay. Who am I? My name is Andy Ray, and I'm full-time head of UCAS and Careers. Full-time, meaning that this is my dedicated role. I'm not a teacher anymore, don't have the marking, still get some of the holidays, so it's pretty good, okay? I'm available for this consultation, it's really important. The school, about a couple of years ago, decided that they wanted somebody like myself, and that means that I have got time and the energy to actually help students and their parents. Once you actually enter the sixth form here at Denston, it is a full-on programme, and we want you to be fully engaged with what's on offer. It's going to be a busy time. There is that sense of focus from the beginning. You'll be offered the opportunity to attend career experience courses. Really quite important if you're starting to think about what it is that you might want to do beyond A-levels, beyond university. So career experience courses within the world of law or marketing or accountancy, for example. Now, what we've also got here at Denston College, which we're very pleased about, is a program of weekly seminars, okay? We don't have just one careers fair jamboree. We have men and women from different walks of life, different companies, different organizations, and they will come and do a seminar every Friday lunchtime. And that's really good so that you can actually understand the different things that are on offer for you. And we also get visits from university admissions teams. Universities are much more savvy than they were uh, maybe a generation ago in terms of marketing themselves, getting the message out there, telling the prospective students, i.e. you, what courses they have and what they have to offer in terms of the student experience. Now, of course, academic progress is the number one thing for a student in the sixth form. Making good of their abilities, making good of the opportunities here at the college and getting the right results at the end. There are reviews available uh, and those will be in conjunction with academic staff. Lots of support here at Denston College. So we can actually see, are you making the right steps forward? Are you taking the right A-levels? Really important. You should consider what is on offer here at Denston. We've continued with the programme that was in place for the AS system, and that means that students have the opportunity to take four A-levels at the beginning of the lower six. Some schools only offer three. The, the, the really virtuous thing about that is you can actually start with four, and at some point in the lower six, go down to three if that is right for you. And this can be done on an individual bespoke basis. So you might have a subject that you really like, you think you might be good at, but actually it transpires as you work through maybe the first few weeks of the lower six, this is not something you're enjoying. Well, the good news is you won't be left in a difficult predicament with just two A-levels and maybe a rogue A-level, which is going to end up in a pretty poor grade. So start with four and go down to three at some point. Of course, there may well be the opportunity for some students, in fact, there is the opportunity for those who want to take four all the way through. They're preparing for the very best universities, Oxford, Cambridge, the very best medical schools, vet schools, so on and so forth. But again, just to uh, re reinforce this, it's done on an individual basis. 
so that we can actually work out what is going to be best for you and your studies. We also have the EPQ, which can be a really useful addition to your A-level studies. It's the Extended Project Qualification. It's worth half an A-level and you can choose what it is that you'd like to study. Universities love it because you're starting to demonstrate your independent learning, your maturity, your sort of interest in academic study. It doesn't have to be an essay. We've had students deliver their EPQ with a fashion show, with a dinner party, with a series of lessons taught to younger students. It can be really that sort of uh, invigorating and interesting. We also have the Denton Diploma, where you have the opportunity to study another, uh, some, a number of, of extra subjects, uh, MOOCs, uh, which you then we can sort of uh, validate with a diploma and we can talk about um, in your reference when you're applying to university. Now we have some OD societies, OD standing for Old Enstonian. Don't worry, it's not as crusty as it sounds. These are societies based on some really important areas that you might well be considering for your future employment. We have medicine and law and finance and STEM, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now these will meet uh, roughly about every 12 months, individually. And it's on a Saturday morning and we have men and women who've been to this college who are now working in these particular areas. They'll come and deliver a series of presentations, they'll do workshops and you'll have lunch. It's a chance to network, maybe gain some work experience. Now it's not the old boy network. It is definitely not having the right tie and all that sort of nonsense. But what it is, is actually having the opportunity to garner really important information about how you can actually gain entry to some of these competitive areas in your professional working life. Now, we do have some higher education events uh, that we will promote and that you can attend. There is a higher education event that we have every Lent term. So you've got through your first term, we're past Christmas, we're looking towards um, you preparing and researching for your application. And that'll be something that will happen on Saturday morning in March. We also have university visits to actually get you to the campuses, to actually have a look around and get a feel for them. You will, of course, be attending uh, open days uh, with your parents, with your friends as well. For those looking at uh, Oxbridge, you'll have a day in Cambridge and you will have a day in Oxford. Now, there are lots of people considering the opportunities abroad. And that is something that we are keen to make sure that pupils are aware of. And we will help you with that process of research and application. We get visits on site from representatives from lots of different universities. So recently we've had uh, representatives from Sydney, Queensland and British Columbia universities. We also have a study in Europe seminar. And if you're really keen on the idea of university in the United States, we give you the information for their annual Fulbright exhibition, which is held down in London with lots of attendees, it tends to be about 150 uh, from American universities and colleges. Now, of course, university is not the be all and end all. And I'm very keen, and the college is very keen, to make sure that students are aware of some of the great opportunities, the great alternatives to university. We are not stuffy. There are some great opportunities with apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships. So there'll be lots of information supplied. We have visiting speakers uh, from companies and government bodies and agencies to make sure that you're aware of the great opportunities. For example, we have JCB on our doorstep, a fantastic international company with some great opportunities within their apprenticeship programme. And the important thing to recognise, this is not a binary thing, it can run in tandem with applications to university. And then later in the process, you can make the decision if you're holding job offers and also university offers. Networking, of course, increasingly important. We can find information. We can use things such as Facebook. I know, again, a little bit old, but trust me on this one, I'm not going to be TikToking. Students who've uh, been at this college, who are at universities, we can ask them questions. What do they like about their particular course? What do they like about their particular university? And we can also use LinkedIn as well. For those former students who are now working in different companies, we can find out what it is that they're up to. What's their advice on what students now should be thinking about? 
UCAS, which is the uh, University and Colleges Application Service, well, that's the main platform. Most people will be applying to university, and it's important that you're au fait, you're up to speed with this process. You'll have a full training day uh, with myself and my colleagues, and then actually, once you're at the start of the upper six, we have something called UCAS Clinics. Don't worry, it's not medical. You've got opportunities to come and sit down with myself and actually work through your research, work through your application. Is it competitive enough? Are you looking at the right institutions, the right courses? Have you made any mistakes in how you've filled out your application? And I'm available to actually have meetings with yourself and your parents, looking at strategy, making sure we're getting this right. Going back to my role as a full-time dedicated head of UCAS and careers, I've got flexibility across my working week to meet up with parents. I can do this at the end of the working day from 5.30 onwards and also, crucially, Saturday mornings. So parents who have got busy schedules themselves can come in on a Saturday and we can all sit down and we can start to work through this and find out what it is that we want to do. Now, once you've actually submitted your application, then you go through the process of offers and rejections. And there will be full support to actually take you through this in terms of what are the implications as to what you're holding, what should be your firm choice, and what should be your second choice. Now, results day. It can be quite a big nervous uh, event. It can be a, a time for joy and celebration. There will be people on hand. I will be on hand to help students if you haven't quite got what's required. There's this level of comprehensive support. Clearing is something you might have heard of, and that's something we help you with to make sure you're making the right sort of choices. Now, for those of you who've actually done better than you thought you were going to do, there's something called adjustment. And that's where you can actually hold your university place that you've gained, but try and get to a better university. So for instance, you've actually achieved two A's and a B, and that was your offer from university. Sorry, you were offered, I got that wrong, two A's and a B, but actually you've achieved A star and two A's. We can look at A star and two A's university. Post A levels, well, application is given freely. So it might be that you've actually decided to do a post A level application. You've left the college. You still have the opportunity to come sit down with me, speak to me on the, on the phone. Support is there. I'm not saying it's like an umbilical cord, but certainly just because the fees haven't stopped being paid, you still have access to the college and to myself. And this can be three, four years afterwards. Just recently, I did a, a reference for a young man of 25 for uh, an MBA course. Some of you also might want to transfer university. It does happen a small number of times, and I'll be there to, to talk you through the implications and talk you through how you should go about that. Thank you for listening.